Good morning everyone. Welcome back to analysis of indeterminate structures. In this session, let us analyze simple portal frame which is subjected to loading as shown in figure. To analyze this particular frame, we need to follow the simple steps. That means the entire solution has been divided into simple four steps here. As usual, in step number one, we need to find the total degree of static indeterminacy. So we can use the formula 3m plus r minus 3j. So here 3, the number of members are 2 and reactions. See here, in previous two problems, we have taken both the supports as fixed. Here I have taken one support hinge and one support fixed. So at A, since we have int support, the number of reactions are 2 and at C, we have fixed support, therefore the number of reactions are 3. Therefore 2 plus 3, it is 5. Then joints, we have 3 joints, 3 threes are this, 9. So if we solve this, 3 twos are 6, 6 plus 5, 11, 11 minus 9, it is 2. The degree of static indeterminacy will be 2 or even you can apply number of unknown reactions are 5 minus known equilibrium conditions for portal frame it is 3 therefore we get the degree of static indeterminacy as 2. So after getting the degree of static indeterminacy based on this number we can assume the redundance. So I need to assume two redundants. Since I have degree of static indeterminacy as 2, I take off this support, injured support and you can call this particular figure as given structure or given frame. So next if I assume the redundance at A as RAV and RAH, these are the two reactions we are going to get at A. And we can consider these two reactions as unknowns at A. So you can take off the support at A just to convert the given frame into a simple determinate structure. So assume RAB and RAH at A. So here the coordinate number 1 will be RAV and the coordinate number 2 will be RAH. This point is called A. This is P and this is C and this is D. As usual, the other details like span, I details remains as it is. So this particular diagram is called figure B. And you can call this as released structure. Even you can assume the redundance at support C also. My intention is to convert the given frame, indeterminate frame to a determinate structure. And in doing so, if we get the cantilever bent shape, the procedure will be simpler. That's why I have just removed support A here. So here I am going to get RAV and RAH. So you can mark this RAV as coordinate number 1 and RAH, co RAH as coordinate number 2. And in figure C we can mark the coordinate directions. So this is the coordinate number 1. And this is the coordinate number 2. So this shows the details of coordinate directions. Even you can mark the directions in this diagram itself. In front of RAV you can mark it as 1 and at RAH you can mark it as 2. Or else you can write the separate diagram to show the coordinate directions. In step number 2 as usual we are going to apply the unit load method to find these unknowns RAV and RAH. To apply the unit load method we require the standard table that includes segment 
then origin and the details of limits and EI values then moment because of the applied loading and moment because of the unit loads applied at the coordinates we have two coordinates here therefore we get m1 and m2 so in previous problem we have got dsi as 3 therefore we were getting three coordinates and the order of matrix is also 3 cross 3 that is f matrix here since we have got dsi as 2 we get the f matrix order as 2 cross 2 so to fill this details i need to draw the free body diagram see if you observe the release structure this figure can be referred to write the details of moment because of the applied loading that is m so here as you can see we have three segments so if you keep a as origin that means if you come from a side it is ad db and bc these three are the three segments we get for this particular frame and you can write the details of origin ei and limits if you observe this release structure so if i keep a as origin for span ad the limits will be 0 to 2 and d as origin for span db the limits will be 0 to 4 and b as origin for span bc the limits will be 0 to 5 like that we can fill up the table here for span ad a is the origin for span db d is the origin for span bc b is the origin and the limits are 0 to 2 then 0 to 4 then 0 to 5 and the details of ei will be for the first two segments that is ad and db it is 2 and for the last segment it is 1 now to get the details of moment because of the applied loading we should take the section in between the segments let us take the section here between the segment AD. Call this as X. So look here, to the left hand side of this section, I don't find any kind of forces. Therefore, the moment about this point will be zero. Next, repeat the same procedure. Take the section between the span DB since we have taken d as origin mark the section distance from d to this particular point as x now if you take moment about this point the load is 50 50 multiplies by x and this acts in anti clockwise direction to the left of the section anti clockwise moments are negative to the right anti clockwise are positive to the left anti clockwise moments are negative therefore this will become minus 50 into x now i need to take the section between the span bc since we have marked b as origin take the distance from b to this particular point as x now take moment about this particular point so we have two loads here 50 and 15 so because of this 50 about this point i will get the moment in anti-clockwise direction see like this as 50 into 4 so this is 50 into 4 then i have 15 into x into x by 2 if you want we can simplify here see it is minus 50 into 4 then this is because of point load minus 15 into x into x by 2 if you simplify this this will become minus 200 minus 7.5 x square this you can write in the table it is minus 200 minus 7.5 x square so we got the details regarding m now so i should find the m1 and m2 that is here we have referred the figure b that is because of the applied loading now i should write the free body diagram to get the moments because of the unit load applied at coordinate number one and unit load applied at coordinate number two so here if i write the structure 
this is point A, this is B and this is C. You all know while applying unit load, we should remove all the applied loadings that is 50 and 15, we won't take here. And the first coordinate is the vertical reaction and here I am going to apply the unit load that is 1 kN. Call this as figure D that is unit load applied at coordinate number 1 and we use this diagram to find M1. You can write it here figure D. So now between segment AD you can take the section and call this as X. Now if you take the moment about this point 1 into X and this acts in clockwise direction therefore it is plus X. Now here between DB if you take the section and you can mark the distance X from point D. So now if you take the moment about this point from A to D it is 2 meters from D to B it is 4 meters. So I am taking moment about this particular point from D to this point is X and from A to D it is 2 therefore it is 1 into X plus 2. Now take the section in between the segment BC and mark this distance as X. Now take moment about this point. So first find the moment about B. It is 1 into the total distance is 6. So it will act like this. It is 1 into 6. This will be 6 kN meters. The moment which I am going to get at point B, the same moment will be transferred about this point also. Therefore, the moment value is 1 into 6. It is 6. And the sign convention is positive because it is acting in clockwise direction. Now I got the details for M1. So the last point is M2. As usual, draw the free body diagram like this. So here remove all the loads. Just apply the unit load at coordinate number 2. This is point A, this is D, this is B and this is C. So this is 5 meters, this is 4 meters, this is 2 meters. As usual, we are going to take the sections here. Between A and D, the distance is taken as X. Now take the moment about this point. Since the force is passing through the same line of action, the moment about this particular point is taken as 0. Now between the segment DB, you can call this distance as X. Since we have taken D as origin, we should measure the distance from D. So here also the force passes through the same line of action, therefore the moment is 0. Now take the section between the segment B and C and call this distance as X. Now from the principle of transmissibility, you can transfer this force here. So this 1 kN, so 1 into X, so and it acts in clockwise direction. So it is plus X. So for M2, you can call this as figure E and this is the free body diagram to get the details of M2 because of the unit load applied at coordinate number 2. So here you can write it as figure E. So like this we can get the details of bending moment because of the applied load and unit load at different sections. So this completes step number 2. So if you recall in step number 1 we find the DSI. Based on the DSI we assume the redundance and we are going to write the released structure and we are going to mark the redundance on this particular structure. At the position of redundance taken, we should mark the coordinate directions. So we have taken the vertical and horizontal reactions as the redundance. Therefore, we get coordinate number 1 and 2 like this. So to apply the unit load method, we need this standard table which includes you of all these details like segment origin limits, EI and bending moments taken at different sections because of the applied loading and because of the unit loads at different coordinates. Clear? So now we shall move on to the step 3. 
in step 3, we can write the general equation of flexibility matrix that is D minus DL equals to F into P. You can call this as equation 1. And you all know, since we don't have any kind of rotation or sinking of support, this matrix becomes 0. And since the DSI is 2, the order of flexibility matrix will be 2 cross 2 and this DL and P matrices will be 2 cross 1. These two are the column matrices and this is the square matrix. So now to find the DL, that is displacement due to loading at the coordinates 1 and 2. To find D1L, we can use the basic formula that is integral of m into m1 into dx divided by ei within the limits 0 to L. So here I am going to multiply the moment values because of loading and moment values because of unit load at coordinate number 1 for all the segments. So look here. For the segment AD, 0 into x, it is 0. For segment DB and BC, I will get some values. That is minus 15 into x into x plus 2, minus 200 minus 7.5 x square into 6. And we have different integral limits here. For first segment, it is 0. And for the second segment, within the integral limits, it is minus 50 x into x plus 2 into dx divided by Look at the EI variation also, we have 2 EI and the limits for the span DB are 0 to 4 plus for the last segment it is within the integral limit minus 200 minus 7.5 x square by 6 into dx divided by it is just EI because the variation of EI is just 1 between the integral limit 0 to 5. So, if you solve this particular equation, you are going to get the value of D1L and the value is minus 8808.33 divided by EI. So, now in the same manner, if I solve D2L, so the expression is given by integral of M into M2, since it is we are finding the DL at coordinate number 2. For capital M, you should multiply small m into dx divided by ei. Again, for the span ad, it is 0 into 0, 0, minus 50x into 0, 0. We get only because of the last segment that is integral of minus 200 minus 7.5x square by x into dx divided by ei within the integral limits 0 to if you solve this particular equation, you are going to get the value of D2L as minus 3671.87 divided by EI. So we got the values for DL matrix, take out 1 by EI as common. So we got minus 8808.33 and here minus 3671.87. 8.7. So we got DL. Now we should find the F matrix. So you all know F matrix contains the four elements here: F11, F21, and F12, F22. So here these two are called principal diagonal elements, and F12 and F21 are symmetrical. We find the elements column wise. If you want to get the F11, we have the formula integral of m1 into m1 into dx divided by ei within the integral limit 0 to l. You know the definition for this f11. It is the displacement at coordinate number 1 because of the load applied at coordinate number 1 itself. So now look at the details at m1 for segment ad it is x here it is x plus 2 and it is 6 for first segment it is integral of x into x it is x square into dx divided by 2 ei within the integral limits 0 to 2 plus integral of x plus 2 whole square into dx 
divided by 2 ei within the integral limits 0 to 4 plus integral of the last one it is 6 square into dx divided by ei for last segment the ei variation is just 1 therefore it can take it as ei within the integral limits 0 to 5. If you solve this particular equation you are going to get the value of f11 as it is 216 divided by ei. So now we shall calculate the second element in first column that is f21 it is integral of m2 into m1 into dx divided by ei within the limits 0 to l. Here for the first segment m2 into m1 0 into x it is 0 0 into x plus 2 it is 0 we have x into 6 therefore it is 0 plus 0 plus integral of x into 6 into dx divided by ei within the limits 0 to 5. So here if you solve this particular equation we are going to get the value of f21 as it is 75 by ei and you all know this is also equals to f12. So now if you look the second column so I have already got the value of f12 so I just need to find the value for f22 and f22 is given by integral of m2 into m2 dx divided by ei it is within the limits 0 to l again 0 0 and it is x so 0 into 0 0 again for the second segment also it is 0 for the last segment it is x into x x square into dx divided by it is just ei within the limits 0 to 5 if you solve this particular equation So we are going to get 41.67 divided by EI. So now we got all the elements required for F matrix. So if you take out 1 by EI outside, so F11 is 216, F21 is 75 and F12 is also 75 and here we have 41.67. This is the F matrix. Now just substitute the values of F matrix and DL matrix in equation 1 to get the unknown force matrix P minus 1 by EI into the DL matrix will be minus 8808.33 and minus 3671.87 equals to the F matrix 1 by EI into so we have 216 then 75 and here also I have 75 and this is 41.67 by P matrix you can call it as P1 and P2 here P1 is nothing but RAV and P2 is nothing but RAH so now here EI and EI gets cancelled if you multiply the sign to the inside it will become plus since I want P1 and P2 values I just need the inverse of this this will become 216 75 this is also 75 this is 41.67 inverse by plus 8808.33 and this is 3671.87 so if you solve this particular equation you are going to get the values of p1 and p2 that is RAV and RAH as P1 is 27.15 kilonewton and P2 is 39.26 kilonewton. Since these two are reactions, we should represent them in kilonewton. Since it is 2 cross 2 matrix, you can solve this equation manually or you can also solve with the help of calculator. So now we got the unknown reactions that is RAV and RAH. Let us mark these reactions on the frame. So this is the given frame 15 kilonewton per meter and this is 6 meters and here I have 
the hinge support that is A and this is B and this is C and this point is called D and here I have the load 50 kilo Newton this is 2 meters and this is 4 meters since I have got the answers in positive manner whatever the directions I have assumed initially that means initially I have assumed REV like this it is correct you need not to change the direction here and RAH I have assumed to the right side that is also correct that is 39.26 kilo Newton. Now I need to find the final end moments here that is moment at A that is MAB, moment at B MBA and MBC and moment at C that is MCP. You all know at hinge the moments are 0 therefore the moment at MAB is equals to 0. Now I should find the final end moments with the help of static equations. For that I need to draw the free body diagram of this individual span that is span AB and span BC. So here we can call this particular step as step number 4. So look here we know that at inch at A since the support A is hinge the moment at A that is MAB is 0. I will start from this span itself. So take span AB. So if you take span AB. So here I have the reactions 27.15 and this is 39.26 and the moment here it is 0 and I have 50 kN load here. So this is support B that is joint B. So here I don't know the reaction call this as RB and here to balance the structure I get one more horizontal reaction as 39.26. This is 2 meters and you can call this as D this is 4 meters. This is the free body diagram required. With the help of static equilibrium conditions, you can find the values. First, I find this Rb by applying summation of Fy equals to 0 upward forces as positive. So, I have 27.15 acting upward, acting in upward direction plus Rb minus 50 equals to 0. If you solve this particular equation, I am going to get the value of Rb as it is 22.85 kilo Newton. Now, take the moment about A, this is point A, take the moment about A to find this moment. Here I do not know the moment value that is MBA, mark this in clockwise direction. Therefore, now take the moment about A that is summation of MA equals to 0 clockwise moments as positive. So, I have 15 to 2 then plus MBA and minus RB into 6, clear? That's it. 15 to 2 plus MBA minus RB into 6 and we won't get moments because of these two forces because these two forces passes through the same point. This equals to 0. I know the value of RB, substitute here and solve. If you solve this equation, you are going to get the value of MBA as 37.1 kilo Newton meters. Since I have got the value in positive sense, whatever the direction I have assumed is correct. So you can mark the value of MBA in clockwise manner. Now you all know since B is a common joint for both the spans at B, MBA plus MBC equals to 0. Therefore, MBC will be minus 37.1 kilo Newton meters. So now you can mark the value of MBC on this frame. Since I have got the value of MBC in negative manner, just mark it in anti-clockwise. So here the moments are 37.1 kilo Newton meters. Now let us take the last span BC to find the moment at C that is MCB. So for that we just need to draw the free body diagram of span BC.
see here I get one horizontal reaction like this 39.26 kilonewton we have here the horizontal reaction to the left side therefore here to maintain the equilibrium mark the horizontal reaction to the right side and the vertical reaction RB that is 22.85 will act like this and the load is you all know it is 15 kilonewton per meter and at B we have the moment as 37.1 in anti-clockwise direction and at C I don't know therefore I mark this as in clockwise direction M C B and the length of this particular column is 5 meters like this you should draw the free body diagram for span B C now again with the help of equilibrium conditions we can find the bending moment at C so just take the moment about C itself therefore we can avoid these two reactions and I mark clockwise moment as positive therefore I will get 39.26 into 5 this acts in clockwise direction therefore positive minus 37.1 this moment is acting in anti-clockwise direction therefore negative and this 22.85 passes to the same point therefore I won't get any moment because of this load and I have minus 15 into 5 into 5 by 2 plus mcb equals to 0 if you solve this particular equation you are going to get the value of mcb as it is plus 28.3 kilonewton meters therefore whatever the direction i have assumed is correct so you can mark this as plus 28.3 kilonewton meters so now you can see we have got all the final end moments that is at A, at B and at C. Now to sketch the BMD I need to get the span moments. So here for span AB I have D point and about this point you can take the moment. Therefore I take this as D and I take the moment from the left hand side. So to the left hand side we have 27.15 into 2 acting in clockwise direction that is upward positive and it is 0 plus 0 and this is equals to 54.3 kilonewton meters and this is positive bending moment now on this particular span you can take the midpoint and you can call this as e now to calculate the bending moment at e you can take the section either to downside of E or to the upside of E I just take towards B this will be look here so you can't get any moment because of this 22.85 because this passes through the same line of action again I have 39.26 into the mid span means it is 2.5 then I have this moment minus 37.1 then I have UDL minus 15 into 2.5 into 2.5 means I can write it as square divided by 2. If you solve this particular equation, I am going to get the value of moment at E point as it is 14.18 kilonewton meters. So now we have got the span moments also. So by keeping all these moments, that is the final end moments we can get from this figure and these are the values of span moments by keeping these values we can sketch the BMD to sketch the BMD just mark the reference line first I take span AB so if you take span AB at A the bending moment is 0 and at B the bending moment is 1 to the downward because the arrow mark is to the downward side next at D the value of bending moment is 54.3 so here I can mark this as 54.3 and all the values are in kilonewton meters now according to the load variation you can join these points since the given load is point load 0 to 54.3 then to 37.1 then 0 again so 
this is positive and this is negative. This is point A and this is D and this is B. Now I take the column that is pan BC. Again at B I have 37.1 kilo Newton meters to the left hand side. Next 28 point 3 kilo Newton meters to the left hand side and exactly at the mid span we have marked that point as E at that point we have got 14 positive 14.18 to the right hand side the moments are taken as positive so this is 14.18 now again according to the load variation just join these points since we have UDL you can join these points with parabolic variation. So these are negative bending moments and this is positive bending moment. So just mark the point of contraflexures. So here I have point of contraflexure. Here I got two point of contraflexure. Just you can call this as BMD. And to sketch the elastic curve that is the last part of this particular problem. So you just draw the reference line of the frame given the supports this is A and uh, this is D this is B and this is C so just mark the point of contraflexure approximately so somewhere here I get one point of contraflexure and here here I'm going to get the point of contraflexure then you can draw at hinge we get some rotation therefore we should draw the elastic curve like this sagging and here this hogging and hogging based on this point of contraflexure marked we can show the sagging and hogging nature of curve so this is called as elastic curve so in flexibility matrix the analysis of portal frame becomes simpler if you get the order of matrix as 2 cross even you can analyze the 3 cross 3 size matrix but it consumes little bit of time. Let us meet in the next session. Thank you.